Do you want to live and work where other people vacation, surrounded by clear blue sea and stunning green jungle? I might have just the place for you. Belize. Belize is yet another country in Central America that has launched a digital nomad visa. Yet, unlike some of its neighbors, it's not particularly well known. I aim to change that. So in this video, I will introduce the country of Belize, some digital nomad hotspots, some fun things to do, and of course, the digital nomad visa to Belize to you. If you at some point want to re-watch some parts or jump right to the visa description, you will find the time codes down below. They will take you right where you want to go. Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm passionate about traveling and learning about other cultures. Here on this channel, I aim to provide you with everything you need to know to start the digital nomad lifestyle. So if this sounds interesting to you, please subscribe below and click the little notification bell. And now with that said, let's get right into the video. Okay, so let me introduce Belize to you. Belize is a Caribbean country on the northeast coast of Central America. It borders Mexico to the north, the Caribbean Sea to the east and Guatemala to the west and south. On top of the mainland you can also find over 400 islands on its coast. Its population count is just under 400,000, which makes it the least densely populated country in Central America. Because of this, 60% of its territory are undisturbed forest, which is home to hundreds and hundreds of different species, both plant life and animal. But not only the forests house an impressive amount of animals, it is home Home to the second largest barrier reef after Australia, the Belize Barrier Reef, and to one of the most impressive UNESCO World Heritage Sites, the Large Blue Hole, which is a sinkhole in the middle of the ocean. It has a very rich history which has led it to become a multicultural melting pot and, surprisingly, for a country in Central America, its main language is English. Although the locals do speak Creole, which is kind of a English that sounds maybe a bit like Jamaican English, but you can speak English and will be absolutely understood. No Spanish needed. This is because it used to be colonized by the United Kingdom. And while it has gained independence today, it is still a country of the UK Commonwealth. Its currency is the Belizean dollar, which transfers 2 to 1 to US dollars. So that makes conversion quite simple. 2 Belizean dollars are 1 US dollar. 10 Belizean dollars are 5 US dollars. Its capital is Belmopan, which was built after a hurricane destroyed the former capital, Belize City, which actually to this day still is the largest city of the country. Let's talk a bit about the weather. Belize has comfortable subtropical temperatures, which means it's warm all year round. It has two seasons, which are the wet season and the dry season. The dry season typically occurs December through May and the wet season June through November. One thing you should be aware of is that Belize also has a hurricane season, which coincides with the Atlantic hurricane season. It officially runs from June 1st to November 30th each year. However, historically, most tropical storms have occurred from end of August to mid-October. It is actually very rare for hurricanes to make landfall in Belize, but when they do, they can cause quite the devastation. Next, let's talk about some digital nomad essentials. Things you as a digital nomad will need to be able to work here. First and foremost, of course, internet connection. You will not be able to be a digital nomad without functioning internet. Well, Belize has put some work into internet connectivity in the last few years, but I found differing accounts. Some say that the Wi-Fi can be spotty, others say that the internet is of great quality and consistency, however, the speed might not be what you're used to. Places like San Pedro now have fiber cable and 4G mobile network is available in the country. So if you are not entirely sure or your connectivity is not as good as you want it to be, one option would be to buy a local SIM card and use a hotspot with your mobile phone. Digital nomad infrastructure such as cafes with Wi-Fi or co-working spaces do exist but they are very small in numbers. Another issue seems to be that it is hard to find long-term rentals, which of course drives up the cost of living. Since we are talking about costs of living, let's get a bit more into that. First of all, 
Let me be clear, Belize is a third world country, meaning that imported goods that you might be used to, as well as creature comforts, such as for example air condition, are luxury goods and those will cost quite a bit. Apparently at $6 a gallon, gasoline is also considered expensive by Americans. I personally pay $7.20 per gallon, so for me that, you know, seems like a good deal, but each country is different. Usually. I compare a lot of cost of living websites and give you the numbers. But because the calculation of the cost of living here has been mostly oriented towards what the locals pay, I decided to take a different route this time and use primarily numbers from pages like Nomadlist. Nomadlist actually calculates the cost of living from between $2,103 to $3,225 depending on location, so it's not cheap. Again, you will find prices that are a lot lower than that, $500, $250, and yes, you can get by with that, the locals do, but then you will have to live like locals in a third world country. Another website that I felt is giving reliable numbers for expats that want to have at least some of the western lifestyle is Expatistan. Expatistan calculated the cost of living as $1,421 for a single person, $3,565 for a family. Digital Nomad Hotspots. So, I guess typically when one thinks of digital nomad hotspots, the first thing that comes to mind is the capital of the country. Not so in Belize. While Belize city is the biggest city of the country, there is not that much to do there and actually it has a quite staggering crime rate due to gang violence and murders. Apparently safety issues get worse the further south in the city you go. So it is safe to stay in the touristy areas, but there's not much to do and most digital nomads, backpackers, tourists, expats actually do not live in Belize city. However, there are a few digital nomad hotspots. One of them is Umaya village. Umaya village actually used to be a resort that has been turned into a digital nomad living community and it is located in Placencia. Here you have self-contained apartments, views over the ocean and the lagoon and the village runs a lot of workshops to help you with professional development. It also hosts regular excursions to see the country. Placencia itself is a fishing village. It is located on the southern tip of the Placencia Peninsula in southeastern Belize. Apparently Placencia is supposed to have some of the most beautiful beaches in the country and its main mean of transportation is golf carts. Placencia is only one of three villages on the island. It offers cute shops, restaurants, bars, cafes and a little medical clinic as well as an air airstrip to fly in. Another favorite is Kay Corker which is actually only five miles long and less than a mile wide and has a population of around 2,000 people. It has become a very popular destination for backpackers and digital nomads in the past few years because it is very laid back, a bit hippie and, you know, life by the sea and beach. K Corker is also a very good example for what can happen when hurricanes actually hit land in Belize because in 1961 a hurricane named Hetty hit land here and split the island into two. That area is now known as the split. Now K Corker is also a fantastic spot for diving enthusiasts. It does not sport sandy beaches since instead its shoreline is made out of limestone filled with beautiful fishes and things for divers to explore. San Ignacio. San Ignacio is actually a beautiful little town with everything you need. Bars, restaurants, cafes, anything like that. It is also the only place on this list that is inland close to the Guatemalan border. So San Ignacio offers a lot of fantastic outdoor activities that are related to jungle activities, to Mayan ruins. There are a lot of Mayan ruins in the area that you can explore and things like that. You can also go caving. There are caves that you can explore. Um, but if you are into beach life and you would like to go see the beach every now and then, there is a vast bus network that will take you to where you wanna go. San Ignacio is also the cheapest destination on the list. San Pedro. San Pedro is another beautiful beach destination just off the coast of Belize. It is particularly popular for its proximity to the Belize Barrier Reef and actually has four out of the five most beautiful diving spots in the country. So if you're into diving, this is your vibe and that's your place to be. San Pedro hosts a lot of festivals and events, so there's always something to do and it has a lot of great nightlife. General things to do in Belize. Well, as you might have guessed, Belize is a place for being outside, for nature enthusiasts. 
um, for water enthusiasts you can go diving snorkeling kayaking anything you could basically do on the water um, and there's a lot of beautiful animals that you can see a lot of beautiful marine life you can see whale sharks you can see whales you can dive and see you know other great fish of course the belize barrier reef and the blue hole but you can also go to shark alley actually where you can swim with nurse sharks who are not dangerous but very majestic and that's an experience in itself now if you're not that much into water activities there's plenty to do on land as well coxcomb wildlife sanctuary for example is a mountainous tropical forest that protects a lot of animals like jaguars ocelots pumas tapirs and monkeys it also has over 290 recorded bird species the blue hole national park now this is not the great blue hole it is actually another blue hole the st herman's blue hole which is in the jungle and about 20 minutes from the capital it's actually a very impressive site it's a pool in the jungle which is being fed water from an underground cave so if you dive down into the pool you will never manage to hit the bottom or most likely you won't in the same national park you can also take part in a super haunting very very special experience which is the ATM cave tour now ATM stands for Aktun Tunishil Muknal cave tour I'm sorry I probably butchered that and you can tour a cave which the Mayans actually thought was the mouth to the underground so they used it for sacrificial offerings the cave houses the remains of six children and a couple of adults and to get there you will have to swim through the cave it's filled with water you have to swim you have to wade you have to climb and it's supposed to be a really special experience although not something you would take your kids on talking about forest jungle caves and water another super impressive site is the big rock falls which is a 150 foot waterfall visa details the visa is called work where you vacation and its duration is six months requirements are proof of employment outside of belize and a monthly income of seventy five thousand dollars per year as a single person or a hundred thousand dollars as a family yay you get to take your family paperwork you will need a bank statement to prove your income a clean criminal record that is no older than six months a valid passport and health insurance with coverage in Belize for at least $50,000. The visa costs $250 for grown-ups and $100 for children. And the application process seems to be quite straightforward. You apply online either on the web link that I will post below or by writing an email to one of these email addresses. You wait for your approval and once you have gotten that, you just gather all your necessary paperwork and travel to Belize. You will then pay the visa fees at the airport. One big benefit I feel is that your kids will be able to attend local schools without having a school permit. However, of course, $75,000 as a single person is something you first need to be able to earn as a digital nomad. So this might not be for everybody. If you do want to stay in Belize for a couple of months, but you don't meet the income th threshold, or maybe you just don't want to, you know, commit for six months at a time, Belize also has a very easy tourist visa. Basically, you pay $100 and you can stay 30 days. And you can renew this visa how many ever times you wish. So you could basically stay indefinitely if you wanted to as long as you keep paying the hundred dollar visa renewal fee my thoughts on this are honestly it seems like a hassle-free visa in a beautiful location if you know Belize is something that might interest you particularly also considering that they speak English this might be the thing for you now if you are considering digital nomad visas but you are not really sure if that one is yours why not check out the last visa that I reviewed which is the digital nomad visa to Panama linked up here maybe that one fits your needs a little better and with that said i hope you have a beautiful week and i'll see you here next time bye bye